mercury and gold mining are inextricably linked. Um, there's a, perhaps as many as 20 million people who mine gold by using very simple techniques. <laughs> and the way they'll take the gold out of the sediment that's left is they'll add mercury into it. And mercury and gold have this affinity where the mercury just sucks up all the gold and turns it into an amalgam. So those tiny little flecks that you can't see that are too small um, in that gold sediment at the bottom. When they put the mercury in, it all gets gobbled up. And they take that amalgam out and they put it into a, into a, a, a crucible, some kind of a, a bowl, and they put a torch to it. The mercury boils off and they're left with gold. And that's, you know, this standard way that 20 million people are, are doing gold mining. This is um, a very large part of gold mining around the world. Uh, the estimates are that as much as 20% of all gold is mined by small-scale guys. So it's not all the big mining companies, you know, Anglo or Barrick or whoever else, that are um, producing all the gold. It's 20 million little guys who are camped out, who are digging up shovel after shovel of, of soil and using rudimentary techniques with mercury to make a living. So, um, so that's going on in uh, more than 50 countries around the world. And as the price of gold has risen, over the last decade, more people have been drawn to doing this and people are leaving farms and going to places where there are uh, uh, gold rich ores and mining now um, all over the world and it's only getting stronger and stronger and stronger and mercury is the main, uh, main, main system that these people are using. When metallic mercury is a problem is when it's in the air as a vapour and you inhale it. In that case, it quickly passes into the blood and it does a very similar thing that lead does. It causes lesions in the brain, it causes uh, mental retardation. So if you're exposed to uh, aerosol mercury for any period of time, even quite short periods of time, you get brain damage. There are also other issues that show up with cardiovascular disease later in life and so on and so forth, but it, it does physically damage you at the site. That's one issue. The more pernicious one is longer term and when they boil off this mercury it then settles into the ground around them. It rains, that mercury then goes down into the local river. It'll then go and get eaten up by little bugs, get eaten by fish and so on and goes up the food chain and while it's doing that it also turns into a substance called methylmercury. And that is acutely toxic at much, much lower levels than metallic mercury. Small amounts of methylmercury cause the, those horrible, devastating uh, birth defects that you see from mini mata, for example. That's all methylmercury. And then bioaccumulates in the food chain and starts to show up in people, especially people who are eating local fish. So what's happened in all of these places where there's been literally thousands of tons of mercury released into the environment is that slowly these places will turn into acute toxic hotspots in the decades to come and we'll start to see people suffering from acute mercury poisoning. There's, a, there's another issue that shows up as well. A lot of this mercury and that methylation can go high in the atmosphere and traverse into our own seas where our tuna fish eat it or it goes down in the waterways and flushes out to the sea and ends up again back into the large pelagic fish that we eat in sushi. So um, we're getting this mercury from gold mining in our own food chains. And unless we find ways to stop this, 
we'll see enormous increase and spike in mercury poisoning in the decades that are, that are coming up. Uh, and we're starting to see it already. Right now you can't, you're not recommended to eat tuna if you're pregnant, almost at all. Very, very low levels. And artisan of gold mining has grown in scope in the last uh, 10 years so much. It affects us too. 